Let's talk about heparin. Heparin. It activates antithrombin, which decreases the action primarily of factor 2A thrombin and factor 10A. It has a short half-life. So normally, so let's just uh, mention one thing above this. In direct thrombin inhibitor, heparin is one of that. So let's talk about normal now. Normally, you have the antithrombin that binds to factor 2, 9, 10 and inactivates them, right? And gets its itself gets used up with them, along with these factors. Now, when heparin binds to this uh, antithrombin by its pentasaccharide sequence, its binding causes conformational change in this antithrombin, which increases its ability to inactivate. Factor 10A Okay And Factor 2A <coughs> Excuse me And uh However, there is one thing that heparin must bind to both factor 2, my bad, factor uh, 2, yeah, thrombin, which is factor 2A, and uh, antithrombin to form a complex. This, when heparin binds to this, it forms a complex. That will inhibit the thrombin. That leads to inhibition of thrombin. Okay, why is that important? Because heparin is a big molecule and it can do this. It can bind to both in one place. So heparin is the only one which can do it, and this cannot be done by low molecular weight heparin, which is going to come later on. Heparin, which is also called unfractionated heparin, this can do the job, but low molecular weight heparin cannot do this job. And we will come to low molecular heparin in a moment. So... What are the clinical uses of this heparin, which is indirect uh, thrombin? And that's what it is, in, in, in indirect thrombin inhibitor, because it's, it binds to, and it uh, change, changes the conformational change in antithrombin, that actually inhibits it. So it's indirect thrombin inhibitor. Indirectly, it's doing its job. So let's look at clinical uses. Clinical uses, we have the uh, immediate anticoagulation for Pulmonary embolism PE immediately for PE, acute uh, coronary syndromes, MI, DVTs, used during pregnancy, very important, because it does, it's a safe drug in pregnancy, so it does not cross placenta. You can monitor the PTT for heparin. <coughs> Adverse effects, you are looking at uh, bleeding, Reverse with protamine sulfate, which is its antidote, protamine sulfate. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia hit. Osteoporosis with long-term use. And drug-drug interactions and type 4 renal tubular acidosis. Now hit has type 1, type 2. In type 1, we have a mild, in which the platelets greater than uh, 100K, I believe. 
uh, mild transient non-immunologic drop in platelet count. So you have a, a transient drop in platelet count that typically occurs within the first two days of heparin, first two days of heparin administration, not clinically significant because still you have platelet greater than 100K. So it's not clinically significant. For type 2, there's a development of IgG antibody, and this is non-immunogenic. Here you have the development of antibodies, IgG antibodies, against heparin-bound platelet factor 4. That typically occurs 5 to 10 days after heparin administration. When, is, uh, when does this occur? 5 to 10 days. That occurs 2 days. So now you have the... Um, so what's really occurring? You have the platelet. On platelet, you have the platelet factor 4 on top of it. Heparin binds to this thing. Heparin binds to this thing. As soon as the heparin binds, immune system is really smart. It's like, whoa, what are you? Come from outside, binding master? You know, <laughs> and then, you know, what, it, what happens, it, uh, it activates, um, forms the IgG antibodies against this whole complex. And that's right, the antibody heparin platelet factor 4 complex against the whole thing and takes it to the spleen and says yo here you go eat this crap and leading to low platelets right that's the immunogenic uh it binds and activate platelets removal by spleenic macrophage macrophages are the you know the batmans they're like whoa let's kill them and causes thrombosis, decreases blood count. Highest risk with un now very important. Highest risk with unfractionated heparin. Treatment is discontinue man, discontinue the heparin. Right. Start alternative anticoagulant, for example, argatroban. Fonda Paranox is a safe to use. Let me erase the junk that I made. But Fonda Paranox is safe to use and does not interact with PF4. So we can do an alternate Argatroban or Fonda Paranox, which is not going to interact with PF4, which is present on platelets. So it is safe. Let's look at notes. Low molecular weight heparin, which is the noxaparin, delta, delta parin, act mainly on factor 10. Low molecular weight heparin act mainly on factor 10. <clears throat> Fondaparinox acts only on factor 10. So see the wording. It's mainly and it's only. So Fonda is like, I'm only fond of factor 10. Everybody else, I don't care. I'm fond of factor 10. I'm going to bind you, man. I'm going to beat your ass. I'm so sorry for the language, guys. <laughs> uh, coming back here. Fonda is only fond of factor 10. Okay. Um, and uh, for the other one, low molecular heparin is just uh, mainly at factor 10. But can also inhibit other things. Both are not easily reversible. That's the issue here. They can reverse them easily. Unfractionated heparin used in patients with renal insufficiency. Low molecular weight, low molecular weight heparins should be used in caution because they undergo renal clearance. So do not give in renal uh, insufficiency. You can give straight up heparin, unfractionated heparins. Okay, so just to uh, write it in a, in a simplified form, you have this uh, low molecular weight heparin. They go into renal clearance, renal clearance. The unfractionated heparin go into uh, hepatic clearance. So if you have a hepatic uh, problem, then give a uh, low molecular weight if you have renal problem give unfractionate heparin okay and this fonda paranox is synthetic synthetic heparin 
Synthetic heparin is fond of paranox. When we said that it, they mainly inhibit factor 10, way greater than factor 2. So although they do inhibit factor 2, but way greater they inhibit factor 10. That's why we just mentioned factor 10 mainly. Okay. And well, one other thing we can do is these synthetic ones. Let me erase the crap that I made here. Um, these synthetic Fonda Paranox, uh, they have better bioavailability and longer half-life than the unfractionated heparin can be uh, administered subcut subcutaneously without lab monitoring. So I'm not sure if they're talking about just this or all of them. So, but uh, just remember that we don't need lab monitoring for these. Most likely from the Paranox, but uh, lab monitoring, no lab monitoring needed. Okay, so yeah. That's pretty much all we have for the heparin.